Hi guys, it's Beth here. I'm with this video because I have something to tell you all. You remember I told you I had a crush on my childhood friend who I... who I've been trying to find for years? Well, I don't have a crush on him anymore. I've been having a crush on him for years now, even when I was a very child after I was playing soccer. Me and Sean were the best childhood friends and he was the best friend I ever asked for. He was like the very first friend until I made more in my school year and in my soccer year. And I was still shy at that time and I didn't like, I didn't like looking at people because I was so shy of what they would think of me if I didn't some people don't like it when you look away. They want you to have an open eye contact. And I was very shy and a little scared. But after I met Sean, I did feel that tingly feeling in my heart as that very child, even though I didn't know what love was. I didn't know what love was, but I went along with it for a little while. And me and him had the bestest time of our lives. We would get distracted and catch butterflies together, and we would sometimes get in trouble by our coach because we wouldn't pay attention. But we still had the funnest time of our lives, and I and we had this one game, and we won the game. We won the game, and I picked him up, and I spun him around while hugging him. I didn't know I was that strong to pick up, to pick him up. I really did not know I was that strong. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry. And honestly, my feelings, my feelings for him throughout my soccer years with him, they gotten more stronger and stronger to the point where I did not tell him. I didn't tell him my feelings to that very point. And if I did, we would still be children. We were still children, and I know it is, it's wrong to be in a relationship that young, but I still wanted to tell him my feelings, either whether or not I was in a relationship with him. But I didn't. And the most, the most heartbreaking moment for me was I didn't tell him I moved away. I didn't tell him I moved away. I was so heartbroken, my feelings were crushed. I thought I would never see him again, and I didn't. I completely almost forgotten about him throughout my years of experience with other friends. And ever since I moved into Rensselaer and made friends like Katea, Sequoia, and the others there, I've forgotten about Sean. I completely forgot about him at that time, and... I didn't want to, and that was very heartbreaking for me. And at that time when I met Katea and the rest of the crew, I was still very shy. I liked, at that time, I liked a little bit of the confrontation. And honestly, now since I got more mature, I liked the confrontation. Usually I wouldn't be that confrontation. I mean, usually I wouldn't like it, but I would. And when I met them, I was happy that I had more friends because I thought I would be very lonely. Because I've forgotten all about my old school friends back in my old school in my hometown. It was hard. It's hard forgetting about your old friends and you don't remember who they are or what they look like. You just remember their names. But after... I moved into Rensselaer and met Gatea and the rest. I had another crush. I had another crush on a boy. But at that time, there were other boys in my school who actually had a crush on me. And I did not know that. And one of them was Aiden. I don't remember who the other one was. The first one, I don't know who it was, but... Then after I met Aiden, who I met, I think, in third grade, he had a crush on me, and he actually did told me, but I rejected him. 
It is hard rejecting somebody who had a crush on you because you feel bad. Sure, you didn't want to, sure you weren't ready, but you still felt bad. And I felt bad for rejecting to some of the boys who I met in my school year who had a crush on me. And at that time, I was, I hit puberty hard. And that is where my chest increased bigger. My butt size was getting more bigger. I looked like a teenager and not a third grader. I did not look like a third grader. My age was different, but my height was different too. My height was tall, but my age, I, I, but in my age, I'm small. I was supposed to be like other kids, not that tall. But I did not know that I was very tall. And some of the boys who were in different classes that I would look, would look at me. But they would look at my body. And that made me feel uncomfortable. I didn't like it when those older boys from... 7th grade to, t to 11th grade. Some of the boys who I would see when I was walking with my friends back to the classroom after lunch in line. I was so uncomfortable. Sure, I saw some of them, but I also saw some other little kids. And I was very uncomfortable with that. Even out in public, I had to deal with that. And... But, yeah, I did tell you guys that I had some rough patches in my life, like dealing with abusement, molestation, and all that stuff. I only dealt with those parts. I didn't deal with anything else. Because I am not, because I don't go outside as often as I used to. As a child, I would always like the outside. I would love bugs, mud. Flowers, rolling in grass. I used to be fun as a child, but I was very fun, cheerful, so happy. I did not experience with any bad thing in my life until that ruined it. After I experienced the abusing and the molesting, that hurt me. That broke my heart, and I did not want to experience that, but I did. And that wasn't my fault. And I took, and after all of that, I knew that it was, it was my fault. I experienced it and I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have gone in the way. But I took my, I took my blame out on others. I yelled, I kept yelling at my mom saying it was her fault that if she didn't, that if she had, if she had done something, this wouldn't have happened. I did that with some of my family members, and I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have yelled at them for the mistakes that I did. They didn't do anything. It wasn't their fault. It was mine. And me and my mom would sometimes yell at each other from time to time now, but we do talk to each other after that because me and her are like best friends. Me and my mother think of each other as more than just a mother and a daughter. We think of we think of each other as best friends. And that is why I do care about my mom so much. I do love my dad, but I know that I would sometimes just always go to my mom. I do like I do love my dad. I do love my dad, but like I said to you guys before in my previous video, the one that where I was so stressed out, I I don't know if I'll be able to see my dad. I don't know. I really don't. I it's so hard. Ever since I was a child, I was so happy with the life I had. And then all of that changed when I experienced some bad things. I wish that didn't happen, but it did. 
And I had to live with that for years. And that is where my depression started. I felt depressed. I felt emptiness, despair. I felt nothing but feeling sad feelings. And ever since in my school year, I never told my teacher, my friends, all of them. I never told them that I felt that depressed because of the things that I've been dealing with in my home. I wanted to tell them, but I was so scared. That's the reason why I never... That's the reason why I stayed home from school. I lied that I was sick. I was never sick. I just wanted to... I was shutting everybody out. I shutted my mom out. I shutted my friends out. I shutted my teacher out. That was very, very hurtful for me. That the fact that I am getting more distant from my friends than I shouldn't have. I've grown more distant from my friends until I had enough. And every time, and every time that I would go out to the bus, I would cry and I would run back to my home. I would run away. I was so scared in fear. Not because about the lying that I was doing. Because I was afraid of exper of I was afraid expressing myself as the emotionless little girl to my teacher and my friends because they would find because I was afraid that they might find out what I was really feeling and I didn't want them to and I didn't want to show them I didn't want to show that to them I <sighs> ever since Ever since I felt depressed, I became a shut-in. I stayed away from out the pup. I stayed away from being outside. I shut in my whole family out. I wasn't the person I was before. I, I wasn't the happiest little girl I used to be. That hurt me. I would sometimes blame myself that I got myself into this mess. And... The voices that I would hear in my head, the things that I would hear, the voices in my head, they would tell me it's my fault. I should have stepped away from the situation. I should have heard in myself I had the chance. You are the disgrace to, my, to your family. You're pathetic. You're nothing. You're meaningless to them. All those voices I would hear are in my head. For years and years, ever since I felt depressed, I would hear them constantly. That hurt me. I would cry to myself. I would cry myself to sleep every night because of it. I would push my mom. I even once threatened my mom to stay home by pouring a whole bunch of ibuprofen on my hand. And I would threaten her saying, I would take all of that medication if you don't, if you don't let me stay home. Because I heard that if you took a lot of pills, like if you put all the pills in your hand and took all of them, that would kill you. I was threatening my mom with that. I threatened her for, for her to make me stay home. If she didn't let me stay home, I would take all of them and kill myself. I laid that out flat to her. Because I didn't want all my friends and, te and my teacher to see what I was going through yet. And that is where I waited a long time to tell them. And by that time, after I moved, it was too late. It was too late for me to, to say to them that I was sorry that I lied to you for years and I never told you the truth. I wanted to apologize to them, but I didn't. And it was too late. <sighs> and... I... But on the bright side, I still have an amazing life. 
even though I wanted to grow more faster than other kids, but I'm taking my time with my age and how I'm feeling about it. And I would sometimes doubt myself because I didn't look... I didn't look more skinny. I have wide hips, wide thighs, and I didn't want that. I didn't want to be this wide. It made me feel uncomfortable of how my weight was. And I did not know how other people would... And I didn't know what other people would think of me as if they took one glance at me and they thought I was pretty. But ever since then... I never thought I was pretty. I never thought I was beautiful. I didn't thought that my white hips would show off my hourglass figure. I doubted myself throughout years. I never thought I was pretty. I never thought that any guy would like me. I never thought anybody would want to be friends with me. I felt like I just wanted to be alone. Where I would have no friends at all. I didn't want to talk with my family. Not making eye contact with them. I just wanted to be all alone. All alone in my room. And just... Sleeping and watching videos to cope. Which... I even would have these voices in my head saying that I would ha- that I wanted to hate my mom forever, that I wanted to hate my friends. I wanted to flat out told, tell my friends that I don't like them, that I don't enjoy their company, that I wanted to stay away from them. I ha- I would have voices in my head that would say break break their friendship, break their hearts. You don't deserve them. You deserve better than them. They're not the type for you. But I, but inside of me, I kept trying to tell that feeling to, to stop. That I love the friends that I have now. And that, sure, I don't like some of the things that they like, but I'm still friends with them because that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what you like or dislike. You can still be friends with them, even if you have some differences. For example... I used to like My Little Pony, but I don't anymore. I used to like Barbie dolls. I don't anymore. Nowadays, I like K-pop, Thomas Sanders, and I still like flowers. I I like fast food. I eat. I I dress in comfy clothes and not more of my old clothes. And I... I have stuffed animals. And I'm into anime. I am into... I'm still into horror movies. I'm not into some girly stuff. There are some girly stuff I like. But I... And I'm not... And I don't watch the Disney movies anymore. I do, but... Not all of them. I do... Yes, on Gotcha Club, I do have the ML, some of the MLP characters with the My Hero Academia characters. But I still don't like watching the episodes. I like the characters in My Little Pony, but I don't like but I don't like watching the show, the the, the My Little Pony show. I like the characters but not the show. But with My Hero Academia, I like the characters and I love the show. And I love the three movies of My Hero Academia. And the heck, I mean, and heck, I'm into another anime that one of my friends got me into, Toradora. I am into that now. And I watched 25 episodes of that. And I watched every single episode of My, of My Hero Academia from season one to season five. Now there's going to be a season six, which I'm very excited. No, and that's not spoilers. I saw a trailer, and I'm not spoiling it. For somebody, for some of you who like My Hero Academia, I'm not trying to spoil it, but I'm just saying there's a trailer coming out. 
And I watched the three movies: My Hero Academia, Two Heroes. Wait, are there two movies? I think there are two movies. Yeah, there are two movies: My Hero Academia, Two Heroes, and My Hero Academia: Heroes Rising. I watched those, and they are awesome. And I had some crushes in My Hero Academia. I had twenty four crushes, some that were in real life and some that were in animation. Okay, and that's only for some that are attractive. For example, I had a crush on Izuku Midoriya from My Hero Academia. I have a cr- I had a crush on Kurashima, Shoto Todoroki, and Katsuki Bakugo, but I don't have a crush. But I don't have a crush on Katsuki Bakugo anymore because he's a bit of a jerk. He is still cool to look at, but he's a jerk. But my first crush was Izuku. As the moment I saw his personality, I immediately thought I am madly in love with him. And it was a bit cheesy. And for some of the real life characters, yes. I had a crush on a K-pop member of. I watch for the K-pop. I like listening to BTS, Twice, Blackpink, EXO, Infin. I think I don't know how to pronounce their K-pop name. Uh, Mamamo. Um, what? Other, I'm into another K-pop group. I think. I really okay. It hasn't crossed my mind, but when I think about it, I will say it to you in the comments of what my other K-pop of what other K-pop I like. But my. All-time favorite is BTS, and they're like the most number one K-pop group of all time. They're like the next king of. They're like the king of K-pop, like Michael Jackson. He's the king of pop. Now they're up to hit. Now they're up to Michael Jackson's level. BTS is up to Michael Jackson's level in an instant. I mean, in a snap. They. Are the number one K-pop? They're the number one hit. I can't believe that they're that famous. And the K-pop member in BTS that I had that I have a crush on to, still to this day, but he's my bias, is Jung Jungu from BTS. My second one is J-Hope. He's my second. My third is V Taehyun. They are just the beautiful men. They are so beautiful. I can't believe their faces. I mean, no wonder every girl loves them. But and I had crushes on. I even had a crush on. I had a crush on Sans from Undertale. And I had a crush on some of the Sans's AUs, like. Dream Sands, Ink Sands, Blueberry, Nightmare, which I don't know why.、Uh, Fell Sands, Outer Tail, so many. I don't know why. And yes, I saw the Outer Tail whole thing. I I I like Outer Tail. I don't know why. I really don't know why. And I also had a crush on Azriel Dreamer from Outer Tail too. He's the goat kid who, he's the son of Queen Toriel and King Asgore. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. And I had a crush on some movie characters. I had a crush on the. Okay, one of my favorite movies is Batman. I loved watching Batman: The Dark Knight. I like watching Batman: The Dark Knight, and I actually had a crush on that. 
Um, I forgot his name, but I had a crush on the guy who played as Bruce Wayne from Batman the Dark Knight. Please tell me who it is again, because I completely forgot. But I had a crush on him. And I watched... One of the movies I used to watch as a kid was the Disney movie Planes. And my fav and I had a crush on the plain Dusty Crop Hopper. And the guy who was and the guy who was acting as Dusty was the actor who was acting as Dusty. The actor's name is Dane Cook. And I had a crush on him. I had so many crushes from anything, and I couldn't help it. All the crushes were from my childhood friend, to movies, to games, and to anime, and to K-pop. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know why. Yes, you guys, some of you guys might think I'm a little weird, but... It's true. I had all those crushes. I don't have the crushes on them anymore. And I'm also into Five Nights at Freddy's. And I had a crush on Freddy Fazbear. Yes, yes I did. And I don't have a crush on that one anymore. I still watch them, but I don't have a crush on them anymore. I sort of moved on. Because I thought to myself, some of them aren't real, even though some of them cosplay as them. Some of them are real, but they're in relationships. So I moved on from that, and I don't have crushes anymore. I feel like I've been talking for hours now, but I just wanted to say this, say this all to you guys, that I don't have a crush on Sean anymore. I still think of him as a friend, but I don't have a crush on him. And I still want to find him and see him again because I miss him. He was my first only friend that I had. Not that all of you guys are my friends, but he was the first. And I just miss him that much. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. and. I'll see y'all later. Tomorrow, I mean. Bye-bye, guys.